Hello everyone, for those of you who want to know who the suspect is right away, I'm going to put a timestamp on the screen so you can jump to that point in the video and just get your answer and go. For those of you who don't necessarily want the answer spoiled, but you want to figure it out on your own and you just need a little help finding the evidence, proceed with the video. In order to get the first piece of evidence, you're going to have to play the mission Brick in the Wall, but first you will have to progress through two campaign missions before you have that mission available. Those missions include Nowhere Left to Run and Fracture Jaw. Once both of these missions are complete, the Brick in the Wall mission will be available on the evidence board. You'll need to progress through almost the entire mission of Brick in the Wall, and then once you get to the very end of the mission where you need to infiltrate Krause's home, that is where you're going to find the first piece of evidence. So you're first going to walk through the doors to enter the building, and then from there you're going to walk straight down the hall and then turn left to go up the stairs, and then you're going to take your first left and it's the first door on the left. You'll need to pick the lock to enter the home. Once you have access to the home, then you need to progress up the stairs once again. If you want, you can tranquilize the wife. I didn't. I just avoided everyone in the house and just snuck up the stairs. And then once you progress up the stairs, you're going to have two doors on the left, and it's going to be the door on the left next to the corner. And then you're going to progress to the right side of the room, and there's going to be a dresser. You're going to open the top drawer, and that is where your piece of evidence is located. Then the next step is to complete the rest of that mission, and then the campaign will automatically progress you through the next mission, which is red light, green light. You'll complete that one, and once that mission is completed, once again, the campaign is going to automatically progress you into another mission called Echoes of a Cold War. This is where you're going to find your second piece of evidence. For this piece of evidence, you're going to collect it much sooner in the mission than you did the first piece of evidence. So right when you jump out of the helicopter, you're going to progress with Woods, and then you're going to have to take out a couple of guards. So just continue to follow the path with him, and then you'll come up to two guards, you'll take both of them out. Then after you progress a little bit further, you're going to see three more guards, you'll take out two of them, and then one's going to be going down the zip line. You can let him finish going down the zip line and then take out the guard at the end of the zip line. I end up taking out the guy on the zip line first, and then the one to the side of him. Then you'll progress across the zip line, and then once you get to the end of the zip line, you're just about to where the first piece of evidence is located, but you're going to have to take out a couple more guards. There's going to be a couple snipers. You can take all of these guards out however you want. You can go and complete stealth, or you can go in guns blazing. It really doesn't matter. Once you've taken out all the guards and gotten to the end of the path, there's another zip line that you can go down to the entrance of the building. You don't actually have to go down the zip line. You can just climb down the rocks, and then you'll take out a couple more guards at the bottom of the hill. And then you'll enter the building through the broken wall, and then drop straight down to the bottom floor. And on the bottom floor, there's going to be a table right in the center, and that is where your piece of evidence is located. Located. After you collect that piece of evidence, you're going to complete the rest of that mission, and then you're going to go back to the evidence board and you'll now have access to the Desperate Measures mission. This mission is where you're going to find your third and final piece of evidence. At the start of this mission, before you can collect the third piece of evidence, you need to first finish your phone call and then go upstairs to attend the meeting. Once you're finished with the meeting, you're going to go back down the stairs to the camera room, so all you have to do is go straight down the stairs and then turn right, and then the camera room is the first door on the right. And in the camera room, you're going to need to shut down the cameras, but first you need to take out the guard that's in the camera camera room, you can do this silently, and then once he's down, you can shut down the cameras. And all you have to do to shut down the cameras is go into the room in the left, and then there's going to be a switch there that you can pull. Once the cameras are shut down, you're going to exit the room and turn right, and then you're going to turn right again, and then go straight all the way down this hall. And at the end of the hall, you're going to turn right once more, and then you're going to go straight all the way down this hall, and then you're going to turn right and enter the records room, right before you turn right at the end of the hall. In order to get into the records room, you're going to have to pick a lock, so make sure no guards are watching you, and then once you get in the records room, you're going to have to silently take down the guard that's in there. After the guard is down, you're going to go into the room on the right where the light is on, and then right on the edge of the table as soon as you enter that room, that is where your third piece of evidence is. After you have the third and final piece of evidence, you're going to complete the rest of that mission, and now you will be able to figure out who the suspects are for the mission Operation Red Circus. If you want to figure out the rest of this on your own, I'll continue to give you more and more hints until I finally give you the answer. So what you need to do first is click on the mission itself, and once you actually click on the mission on the evidence board, then you'll have two tabs pop up that you need to hop between. The first tab is to review suspects, and this is where you can select the three suspects that you'll need to confirm before you actually complete the mission. And then the second tab is to examine evidence, and this is where you can examine the evidence that you collected from those previous three missions. So in order to confirm who the three suspects are, you'll need to match up two dates for a single suspect and then a gender. From the wristwatch, you'll be able to find one date and location, and then from Krause's ledger, you'll be able to find another date and location, and then from the cassette tape, you will be able to find a gender. So we'll start in the middle of the dead drop list from the wristwatch, and the strongman has a date and location of Rome, Italy, 1981, and the person Harvey Spray has that date, and then another person has that date, Leslie Sinclair, and then a third person has that date, which is Jim Krieger. And then we can narrow this down even further from the cassette tape, we know that strongman is a he, so a male, so we can eliminate the female off this list. 
list. Now we only have two people left. So the last thing to do is go to Krauss's ledger, which we have a date of 1881 and Vienna, Austria. So then we'll go back to reviewing the suspects and Harvey Spray has that date and location, whereas Jim Krieger does not. So we can take him off our list. And now we know for sure that Harvey Spray is one of our suspects. Then we're gonna go back to the dead drop list from the wristwatch. And now we're gonna focus on the juggler. On this list, the juggler has a date of 10480 and a location of Poland. We know that Alex Superti has that date and location. And we also know that Eliana Miller has that location, which we can narrow this down even further with the cassette tape. And from the cassette tape, we know that the juggler is a she. So with this information, we can get rid of Alex Superti as one of the possible suspects because we know that he is a male. And that leaves us with Eliana Miller being our second suspect. And since we already narrowed this down, we don't even have to worry about Cross's ledger for the second suspect. Moving on to the third and final suspect, we'll start with the dead drop list from the wristwatch. We're going to finish off with the bearded lady. We know that the bearded lady has a date of 102380 and a location of Cambridge, England. And then going through the suspects, we know that Calvin Dunn has that date and location. And we also know that Claire Koberstein also has that date and location. And then all we have to do, we don't even have to use Krauss's ledger. All we have to do because they're opposite gender is go back to the cassette tape. And we know from the cassette tape that the bearded lady is a male. So then we go right back to reviewing the suspects and we can just cross off Claire, which leaves us with Calvin Dunn as our third and final suspect. So now we have all three of the suspects verified. For those of you jumping to the end just to find the answer, our three suspects are Harvey Spray, Calvin Dunn, and Eliana Miller. Once you have all three suspects confirmed, you can go ahead and launch the mission and then complete it. Once you complete the mission, at the very end of the mission, once you're back to the meeting room where the evidence board is, you'll get a pop-up message saying that you correctly chose all three suspects. And that's all there is to it. So if you have any questions on this, please post them in the comment section. Leave a like if you found this to be helpful. Subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.